When you uh, look at her Twitter biography, it says, entrepreneur, decorporatist, post-human, neo-singularitarian, pandorist, metaphoricist, quixotic, and pervert. Um, in other words, uh, the floor is yours, Kanea Sun Tzu. So, then I would, well, ask you to take part in a little bit of audience participation. Right now, seen from the matrix, <laughs> right now there is a company called Google and they are investing heavily in a product and they gave it a brand name, a sort of a brand name called uh, Calico. Google is investing in life extension. Most of you are in their 30s and maybe 40s, maybe 50s in some cases. You are going to live, if nothing happens, for another 30 or 40 or 50 years, and then you are going to be dead. So your part in life and history on this planet has ended. However, just bear with me, as sort of an experimental thought, what if Google Calico would produce results? So if it works and we get a century, or in the singularity occurs and we get like 20 years or 30 years or 50 years extra, then it means that in, you have to make choices right now about the way we organize society, choices not based on complete apathy or electoral disinterest or self-interest or psychopathic um, uh, selfishness, um, uh, consequences about the collective world we're in right now. Um, right now, we are not making these choices as a society. Nobody gives a damn, clearly. Capitalism, capitalists, most of all, they just think in, in, in very short term. Politicians think in electoral cycles, maybe four or five years. Look at the way the climate is going. Look at the way the resources are depleted. Most resources have a refresh rate uh, of 10 years or something. Uh, aluminium, uh, right now, the amount of worldwide aluminium is like 15 or 20 years. Oil is completely irrecoverable in 2030. Our society stops functioning very quickly if you put it out into the future. Um, there might be technological solutions, but like I made clear, those technological solutions only favor the rich. Well, we know the end result of that. It's certainly not democracy. Do you want to live in that world? Well, if you're going to live more 20 or 30 more years, probably who cares? You've got your pension and then you've got your, quick, your clean way out. But that's not the world that would be ideal as far as I'm concerned. So a glimmer of hope? No, it's a, it's a call to action. <laughs> Timothy Treatwell isn't a hermit like the boy in the, the, the movie uh, Into the Wild was. It was a very uh, sympathetic, silent boy who mm -hmm. just went away to Alaska. But this uh, Timothy uh, is, seeks uh, publicity. He's also an activist. He's um, living, or he has lived... Uh, 13 summers in Alaska, and in winter time, it was in uh, his own town, um, um, uh, where on, on the uh, the great uh, talk shows and television, and he, he made promotion for the for the grizzly and wild nature. Uh, uh, it was also he also had problems with alcohol and with uh, his sexual um, uh, identity. And he, he solved it by uh, going into the wilds, uh, he explained. So it was also a, a, a cure for him. Even in the madness of the, the hermit, there is a source of inspiration, uh, I think. And we have to use our imagination, uh, literature, movies, to make that productive in the discussion and in the f future... Uh, the, 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 uh, future life. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is a gas bag vehicle. I just uh, put it as an um, illustration to begin with because I thought it would be a nice uh, addition to the, the turtle car. So it's a, it's a technology from the Second World War when there was no gasoline and people had to look for uh, alternative fuels and they had like wood gas cars and then they had the gas bag vehicles and that's basically um, uncompressed gas in a, in a nylon or a cotton bag and um, it worked so they could keep driving uh, their cars 
Um, the only problem was uh, passing on the bridges and um, the, the aerodynamics of the car also, but for, for slow driving, that's not a, not a problem. Up until now, what you see is that a combination of more efficient technology, more efficient devices, and um, cleaner energy sources did not bring us any, any um, it did not make us any less dependent on fossil fuels. And you can see that here in, the, um, in this uh, graphic, which is uh, US energy consumption by source for uh, 150 years. And what you see here is that um, we, we keep burning more and more fossil fuels. And every time that we introduce an, a new, cleaner energy source, we don't replace the fossil fuels by the cleaner energy source. So you see that the amount of coal today is, we, that is used in the US today is higher than it was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So what we did, we got like um, natural gas, we got nuclear, and we could have used that to um, replace the fossil fuel plants and to make our, our energy production greener and, and independent of, of oil and, and coal. But we didn't do that. We just piled them all on top of each other. And um, so basically, instead of making our energy production greener, what, what these solar panels and, and um, uh, wind turbines are doing is actually extending energy consumption. And uh, this also happens in countries where population is not decreased, is not uh, increasing so much, like, like the Netherlands. So the Dutch are now more dependent on fossil fuels, for instance, than they were 10 years ago. In spite of all the, the wind turbines, in spite of all the solar, solar panels that were built, they use more fossil fuels than 10 years ago. Finally, the, the last point that I want to make is that um, all of this is not going to unfold in, oscillate, in, in isolation. Um, obviously, there are some other tremendous challenges that our society has, um, particularly in, in areas like climate change and the environment. Um, and these things are all going to kind of unfold in parallel. You know, they're going to happen at the same time, and they're going to intertwine in ways that are ne not necessarily favorable. Um, think in terms of, of the implications of unemployment. If, if going forward there aren't going to be enough jobs and people are going to be struggling to have a sufficient income, then it becomes clear that, that it's going to be very difficult for them to focus on these other big issues like climate change, like resource depletion. Um, and so we, you know, it's going to be a real problem to, to, to really move politically in, in terms of um, finding solutions. And, uh, very often we're, we're presented with sort of two totally different opposing viewpoints. On the one hand, you have the people who believe in limits to growth and then the idea that uh, the planet is about to reach or has exceeded its carrying capacity and so forth. And on the other hand, you have the techno-optimists who believe that technology is gonna solve all these problems. So we don't have to worry too much. But one of the main themes that, that I wanna present and that I've been talking about today is that technology is gonna create its own problems. as as we begin to see jobs disappear and, and incomes for a great many people disappear and um, possibly even growth limited in terms of where our economy can go in the future, you know, those are all gonna be real problems created just by technology and we're gonna have to have a kind of a, a cohesive view which looks at that and also looks at the, the environmental issues and climate change and so forth and, and we really need kind of a comprehensive solution to, um, to all of this, okay? Thank you. Thank you.